Hello from your cooped up teacher. We are ready to take off again with chapter nine titled Chess. But before we do, let's talk a minute about when we left off. And as we left off, we had a whole lot of kids, actually over 200 kids, packing in to an after-school detention in Mrs. Granger's class. Do you remember why? Yeah. Then we had a visitor headed to Nick's house. Do you remember who it was? Okay. Chapter 9, Chess. Mrs. Margaret Chatham had been principal of Lincoln Elementary School for 18 years. She knew Mr. and Mrs. Allen because they had all served together on the building committee when the old Lincoln School was tore down and the new one was built six years ago. When she telephoned on the afternoon of October 1st to set up the meeting, Mrs. Chatham had asked Nick to be there too. It was 6.30 when she knocked and Nick opened the door. Good evening, Nick, she said, no smile. Hi, Mrs. Chatham, said Nick, backing away as she filled the doorway. She was a large person, as tall as Nick's dad, with wide shoulders. Nick guessed she would play linebacker on a football team because that's what his dad had played in college. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, she said, stepping into the living room. She was wearing a long black raincoat with a red silk scarf tied loosely around her neck. She kept her coat on, but took the coat off and tucked, took the scarf off and tucked it into her left pocket. She shook hands stiffly with both of Nick's parents before sitting down on the chair to the left of the couch. Nick's mom and dad sat on the couch and Nick sat on the rocking chair that faced Mrs. Chatham across the low coffee table. This is not an easy visit for me. We are having some trouble at school and it appears as if Nick is in the middle of it. Then, while Nick's parents listened, Mrs. Chatham laid out the story as she saw it. Nick, encouraging the other kids to use his new word, Mrs. Granger, forbidding it, the ruined fifth grade class picture, hundreds of kids staying after school, and a general feeling that there was a rebellion at school with no one respecting the rules anymore. And a rebellion is when people stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore. And here is the illustration of the principal visiting Nick's parents. The caption says, the game was not over. Nick watched his mom and dad while Mrs. Chatham talked, looking from one face to another. His dad was listening carefully, nodding and frowning. He looked embarrassed about the trouble, but his mom looked kind of annoyed. And when Mrs. Chatham finished her story, Nick's mom was the first one to speak. But doesn't all of this seem like a lot of fuss about something pretty silly? Nick sat quietly, but in his mind, he shouted, Hooray for mom! Hooray for mothers everywhere! His mom wasn't annoyed with him. She was annoyed with Mrs. Granger, maybe even annoyed with Mrs. Chatham. This was getting interesting. Mrs. Allen was still talking to the principal. I mean, is there really any harm in the children making up a funny word and saying it? Does there have to be a rule that a word like this may not be used? 
Mrs. Chatham sighed and said, Yes, I suppose it does seem silly. But Mrs. Granger thinks it's rather like keeping children from saying ain't. There have to be standards. That's why we have dictionaries. And really, the problem isn't so much the word itself. It's the lack of respect for authority. Mr. Allen said, Mrs. Granger's right about that. There have to be standards. We can't have kids walking around saying ain't, can we? And that's when Nick piped in. You know that big dictionary in Mrs. Granger's room? The word ain't is right there in the book. I looked it up and there it was. I don't see why I can't use a word if it's in the dictionary. Mrs. Granger even said that her big dictionary was the law. Nick looked from face to face. Now that stumped them all. He had just launched a first class thought grenade. Well, yes, but, but, uh, what, well, as I said, the word ain't and even the word frindle, these are not the real issue here, said Mrs. Chatham. Mrs. Allen said, well, I think the real issue is Mrs. Granger's reaction to a harmless little experiment with language. It's an overreaction. Don't you think so, Tom? And Mrs. Allen looked at her husband. It was Mr. Allen's turn to look from face to face. He was lost. Yes, well, uh, sure, I, uh, I, I guess so. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like anybody's been hurt. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not like vandalism or stealing or something like that. His sentence trailed off. And he rubbed his chin and he stared thoughtfully through the window on the wall behind Mrs. Chatham. What do you think he's thinking about? And while the three grown ups sat there in an uncomfortable silence, moment of silence, Nick had a sudden vision of what was going on here. It was a chess game. Nick against Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger had just tried to end the game by using her queen. Mrs. Chatham in her black raincoat, the black queen. Nick didn't know it until the attack was underway, but he had a powerful defender of his own. Good old mom, the white queen. And the game was not over. It would go on until there was a winner and a loser. Mrs. Chatham didn't stay much longer. There was a little more talk back and forth across the chessboard about how children have a right to explore new ideas, about the importance of respecting teachers and the work they do, about everybody needing to keep up standards and make school a safe place to learn. Then Mr. Allen offered Mrs. Chatham some coffee and banana bread, but she said, no, thanks. I really must be going now. She thanked Nick's parents and they thanked her. Nick opened the door and said, good night, Mrs. Chatham. Then the black queen put on her red scarf and walked off into the October twilight. Nick, I think we'd better talk a little more about this, said his mom sitting back down on the couch. If I find out that you have been disrespectful to Mrs. Granger or any other teacher at school, then you will be in really bad trouble. I haven't been disrespectful, honest. I did get everybody started using my word, but like you said, it's not hurting anybody. 
And I'm sorry if me and Dave and Pete got everybody to ask Mrs. Granger to borrow a frindle. That was mean, I guess. But she started it by making kids stay after school and write a hundred sentences just for saying my word once. All the kids like to use my word. It's just fun. That's all. Well, said Nick's dad, if it gets everyone upset and makes the principal come talk to your mother and me, then it must not be fun for everybody, is it? And I think you should just tell all your friends to knock it off right now. I mean tomorrow. Nick shook his head. I can't, Dad. It won't work. It's a real word now. It used to be just mine, but not anymore. If I knew how to stop it, I think I probably would, but I can't. And Nick looked at both their faces to see if that idea was sinking in. It was. Like I said, I won't be disrespectful, but I do like my word. And I guess now we're just going to have to see what happens. And the chessmen, Nick's king and queen, had to agree the game would go on. So think about that. The author, Andrew Clements, is calling this whole scene a chess game. Back and forth, back and forth. Now, Mr. Clements didn't say it's like a chess game or it's as challenging as a chess game. Just a chess game. So what does that make that? Yeah, a metaphor. Good job. All right, and that brings us to chapter 10, Freedom of the Press. Judy Morgan was a reporter for the Westfield Gazette, the local newspaper. Westfield was a quiet little town. There was the occasional burglary, the teenagers got rowdy once in a while, and there was some shouting at the town council or the planning board now and then. But mostly, things were calm and orderly in Westfield. And every Thursday, the Westfield Gazette proved it. Ted Bell sold advertisements for the paper, and he had a daughter in the fourth grade at Lincoln Elementary. He told Judy that a bunch of fifth graders were making trouble and were not obeying teachers anymore, and that there was something about a secret code word they were all using. And half the students had been kept after school one day last week, including his own little girl. The only other story Judy was working on was about 18 new trees that were going to be planted along East Main Street. The trees could wait. This thing at the elementary school sounded like a real story. So Judy Morgan showed up at Lincoln Elementary School at three o'clock, the day after Mrs. Chatham had been to visit Nick's parents. The sign on the door said, all visitors must report to the office, and she did. On the bulletin board outside the office, Judy saw Mrs. Granger's notice about the punishment for using the word friendle. She stepped back two paces, aimed her camera at the notice, and snapped a photo. She read the notice once more and then stepped into the office. Mrs. Freed, the school secretary, looked up and smiled. May I help you? Yes, I'm sure you can. My name is Judy Morgan, and I work for the Westfield Gazette. I'd like to know about that poster outside the office, the one about this word, friendle. Who should I talk to? Mrs. Freed stopped smiling. She was sick and tired of anything to do with that word. For the past week, her phone had been ringing off the hook. If it wasn't a parent complaining about a child who had to stay after school, it was someone from the school board trying to get in touch with Mrs. Chatham 
or Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Freed pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. Now again, this is the author showing, not telling. So if he's showing Mrs. Freed, squinting those eyes and pursing those lips, what's he showing? That's right, he is showing that Mrs. Freed is mad. You'll have to speak with the principal. Let me see if Mrs. Chatham is free. She was. There isn't a principal alive who won't find time to talk to someone from the local newspaper. The reporter was invited into Mrs. Chatham's office. Judy noticed right away that the principal was not comfortable talking about this stuff. When asked about the poster outside the office door, Mrs. Chatham laughed and said, <laughs> oh, that, oh, it's nothing really. Uh, some kids have just been playing a prank and it was time to put a stop to it. The principal's laugh sounded phony. Now, does that mean it sounds like she's on the phone? No, the word phony means not real. So her laugh sounded phony to Judy Morgan. And did that notice put an end to the prank? I heard that a lot of children were kept after school last week. Would you tell me a little about that? Parents would like to know what's going on. Now, Mrs. Chatham looked like, well, like a kid who'd been sent to the principal's office. Now that's a simile, isn't it? Think about how a kid that had just been sent to the principal's office would look like. She squirmed a little in her chair and tried to smile. She said, well, we do still have a little problem, but it's under control. Mrs. Granger may have overreacted a bit. I don't think the children have been trying to be disrespectful. They're just having some fun. And it's more like a difference of opinion. And then Mrs. Chatham went on to tell the reporter what she knew about the word friendle and how it had become popular among the students. Judy Morgan took careful notes. And when the principal had finished, Judy said, would you mind if I asked Mrs. Granger a few questions? Mrs. Chatham said, no, not at all. Judy could tell that the principal wished she would just go away. What would she say though? Mrs. Chatham, couldn't very well keep the reporter away from Mrs. Granger because, after all, America is a country with free press. If Judy really wanted to, she would talk to Mrs. Granger sooner or later. It was sooner. In three minutes, Judy Morgan was standing in the doorway of room 12 looking in at Mrs. Granger. There were about 15 children sitting in desks scattered around the room busy writing out their 100 sentences. She knocked and the teacher and students looked up from their work. I'm Judy Morgan from the Westfield Gazette, Mrs. Granger. May I have a word with you? Mrs. Granger stood and came out into the hallway and closed the door. Judy could see past her and saw that every kid in the room was straining to listen. Judy noticed Mrs. Granger's eyes right away, gray, maybe flecked with a little gold and very sharp, but not hard or mean, just bright and strong. The reporter didn't waste words. Now that means she got right to it. She didn't mess around saying what she wanted or why she was there. She didn't waste words. So. I hear that you plan to stop the students from using their new word. How goes the battle? Mrs. Granger did not smile and her eyes got even brighter. First of all, it isn't a battle. I am merely helping my students to see that this foolishness should stop. Such a waste of time and thought. There is no reason to invent a new and useless word. They should each learn to use the words we already have. But of course, all of this is just a silly fad. Now, a fad is something that 
all of the kids seem to have or do or want. So think about fidget spinners. We all remember the fidget spinners, right? Seems like everybody had one or wanted one, but they weren't around for very long. They seem to just go away. Fidget spinners were a fad. So Mrs. Granger is saying that the word frindle is merely a fad. And when you add an E to fad, you get fade. And I predict that this fad will fade. Judy looked up from her notepad and asked, any idea how it all got started? Mrs. Granger's eyes seemed to almost catch on fire at that question. And she said, yes, I have a very good idea how it all got started. It was young, one young man's idea a fifth grade student named Nicholas Allen. And now you will have to excuse me, Ms. Morgan, for I have papers I must grade. And with a brief, firm handshake, Mrs. Granger ended the interview. The reporter didn't leave right away. She walked back through the hallway and sat on a bench outside her office so that she could look over her notes to make sure they made sense. It took her about five minutes. Then Judy stood up put her notebook into her large black purse and waved goodbye to a frowning Mrs. Freed and headed out the door. As she walked to the parking lot, five or six kids who had just finished writing their sentences for Mrs. Granger came out another door. Judy walked beside them, listening to them laugh and joke. Then she asked them, why do you kids keep saying friendle? Don't you hate staying after school? A boy who was almost falling over from the weight of his backpack looked up at her and smiled. It's not so bad. There's always a bunch of my friends there. I've written that sentence 600 times now. And then the kids said Mrs. Granger didn't even look at their punishment papers anymore. They were sure because where you were supposed to write, I am writing this punishment with a pen, everyone was writing the word friendle every fourth or fifth grade sentence. And Mrs. Granger hadn't said anything. One girl bragged that she had written the word friendle 45 times on her sheets today. She grinned and said, that's a new record. And this boy named Nick, Judy asked. Has he had to stay after school too? The kids giggled and a tall boy with reddish brown hair and glasses said, Mrs. Granger has kept Nick after school so much that everyone thinks she wants to adopt him. The reporter smiled and said, do you think I could find Nick and talk to him this afternoon? The boy looked at Judy for a second and then said, I don't think Nick would want to talk to you right now. He might say something stupid and get himself in trouble. Then he grinned at his friends. The kids laughed and poked and punched each other and headed off down the block. Judy drove back to her office and started writing. And there is an illustration of one of the kids' pages that says, I am writing this punishment with a friendle. And the caption you can see says, that's a new record. The next morning, a brown envelope arrived at the Gazette offices addressed to Judy Morgan. And below her name was written, Friendle Story. When Judy opened it, there was a class picture. The fifth grade at Lincoln Elementary School. Mrs. Granger and the six other teachers were standing at the ends of the rows and the kids were dressed neatly, hair all combed. But there was something odd about the picture. Do you remember what it is? Yeah. The reporter looked closely and saw that each kid was holding up a pen and each little mouth was puckered in the same way. She was puzzled for a second. But then she said softly, of course. <laughs>
they're all saying Frendel. Written on the back of the picture in neat cursive was third row, fifth from the left. So who do you think is pictured third row, fifth from the left? I'll bet that's Nick, don't you think? Judy looked at the picture and there she saw the same grinning red-haired boy with the glasses that she had talked to in the school parking lot yesterday. She chuckled and said, well, 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 pleased to meet you, Mr. Nicholas Allen. It was Nick all along, wasn't it? And that brings us to next time's chapter 11. Extra, extra, read all about it.